Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about response caching. Now let's understand first what is response caching and then why we need response caching. Response caching is a mechanism using which we can cache response of a HTTP request that is coming into the web API. So the response that is going out can be cached so that it will increase the efficiency of the server. And why do we need to cache the response? Of course, we would cache the response if we need to speed up the response time of a server request. For example, if a service or if a web API is going into database and making some call to find some value, it would be much more efficient if that response can be cached on the server side. But again, not every response can be cached or should be cached. Caching should happen only if we know that the data that we are caching is not going to change often. And as a best practice for the response caching, we should always cache it for a predetermined time. And we are going to walk through all this in a few minutes. So first, for response caching, one thing to keep in mind is the response caching technique that we are going to use today is a pure server-side caching mechanism and the caching happens only on server and the caching happens in an in-memory cache and we are going to use out-of-box add response caching mechanism to add a response caching middleware which is provided by the .NET framework itself. Now one thing we should be very careful about response caching is what is the size of cache that we are going to do? Because given it's an in-memory cache, there is a limit to how much we can cache. And I'm going to show the details of those right now. So first of all, if I go to the program.cs, you can see here, I added add response caching method, which is an extension method on the I service collection and this is going to add the necessary dependencies for the response caching and then we can add the use response caching mechanism to add the response caching middleware into this application pipeline but just doing this two is not going to cache we also have to specify a couple of things so for that, we can use the use method to add the middleware. And here we can say for the cache control, we can define a new cache control. And then we have to set the public to true. This is important for making sure that the caching work. And then we can specify a max age of the cache. So in our case, what I have done is I have set the cache age as 10 second, meaning for 10 second, the cache is going to be active or the item that we have cached for the response will be served from the cache instead of going back into the HTTP web method. And I'm going to show an example how it works. Now, in terms of the add response caching method, there is an overload. And that overload gives an action. And that action, if you see, it has a couple of interesting properties. Now, the first property is use case sensitive paths. This basically says that if we set this as true, the path will be case sensitive, meaning let's say if our API is slash values now if i use slash v uppercase for values versus slash v lowercase for values 
it is going to create two different cache and cache them separately. Now, I personally do not think it will be useful in most of the scenarios. So I would suggest to leave it as false, which is the default value. But the other property which provides is actually very interesting and important, which is the max body side. As I mentioned, there is a limit to how much data we can save in memory. And that limit is provided by the size limit method. The size limit is the response cache middleware is the limit of the response cache middleware in bytes. The default is set to 100 MB. When this limit exceeded, no new response will be cached until the older entries are evicted from the cache. So this is the size limit. The default value is 100 MB. Again, we can change the default value, but as you understand, given that the response is saved in memory, we would have to need more memory for our container to run. Now back to the maximum body size. This is by default has a value of 64 MB. And if the body exceeds this limit, it will not be cached by the response caching middleware. Now, as you can see, this value is very important. Ideally, in a normal scenario, this value should not exceed more than one MB. We should not be caching beyond that. It just doesn't make much sense. So it is, it really makes sense to set this value to one MB. Now, given that this value is in bytes, so this is going to be 1024 and this is what we are going to set up for this one. Again, you don't have to set it, but 60 MB, 64 MB is a pretty big size and you probably do not want to use the default value. So that's why you, it's better to set this value. Now, if we run this application, we can test this out. I'm going to test it out from the Postman. And the reason I am going to test out from the Postman because this is not going to work from browser as is. The reason for that is though we have set up response caching and everything that we need to do, if we do not send the cache control header, the response caching server side middleware is not going to react. And the only way to set the cache control header is either if we are calling it from a JavaScript framework or a C sharp client, or we are using something like Postman. So in my case, I'm going to use the Postman. So first let's run this application. And once the application is started, we can go, this is the URL and API search values is the method we want to call. Now, if we go back to the code and if we go to the controller for the get method here, all I'm doing is I'm returning the date time dot now dot second. So whatever second it was called, that is all I'm returning from here. So now if we go back to the postman and try to execute this function, we can see based on cache control, it will either return a cached value or it will not return a cached value. So now here in the postman, if you can see, we are calling this API. And for the cache control, I have set it as public. As I mentioned earlier, the cache control here, it can be public or it can be just a dash. It will still work, but I just kept it as public. Now, if I send this request, it is showing the time as 45. If I call it again, it is still 45. And 
for next 10 seconds it is going to 45 and then it changed it went to 40 56 that's 11 seconds because I might have clicked after a second here so now if I do it it's back to 11 now let's call a few times and you can see that the response is cached and cached response is coming back and at some point in time it's going to change to 21 or 22. Now if I get rid of this cache control and run it, now every time I run I'm going to get a new value. Though my server is configured for response caching but because I'm not passing the cache control header it is not going to respect the server caching and it, and it is always going to execute the code and return new value. But if I enable the cache again, you can see it is caching back the response for 10 seconds. Now back to code. The one other thing we can do is, for example, if we want to vary the response cache, we can do that based on some header values. So, for example, if we want to cache response for two different encoding. So, for normal encode, normal response versus an encoded response, if we want to cache differently, which we might want to do, because, you know, there are two different encoding, in which case we can achieve it through a particular code of where we can set the context we can do context dot response dot headers and here we can say microsoft dot net dot http dot headers dot very dot very and what we can do is here we can set based on what it should vary and this is going to be a new string array and here for example we can provide a key and it can be something like except except encoding or except language or anything like that now for this one header dot i missed dot header names dot very and this is where we can set it or if we want we can set multiple strings for example except encoding or we can say except language and so on and so forth now one thing to keep in mind about the response caching is that there are few situations in which it will work not every situation for example the request that is coming from the client the server response should be 200 it is not going to cache response for any other HTTP stress code. So that's one very important thing to keep in mind. Second important thing is only the HTTP method get or head will be cached. The other HTTP methods will not be cached. The other important thing to keep in mind is the authorization header should not be present. If the authorization header is present, again, response caching is not going to work. Apart from that, another important thing to keep in mind is that if you are using course, then the use course must be called before use response caching. So it should be called somewhere here if we are using course. It should be before the use response caching. So this is another thing to keep in mind. And in my opinion, the response caching can be really, really useful if we want to amplify the performance of a server response, especially server method, which goes to databases, 
which do not change frequency frequently. And if you are having a lot of call, even if you add the response caching for 10 to 30 seconds, it can be a huge difference in terms of minimizing the number of database call for data which do not change significantly. So this is a feature it's worth implementing. Instead of going and doing caching yourself, we can use the out of box middleware to do the response caching. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.